This lecture is the introduction of MO theory and will start with bonding and antibonding interactions. MO theory is another way to describe what happens to electrons in bonds. Hybridization is one theory. In hybridization, the carbon atom alone has electron occupancies that follow the Schrodinger model. So the p orbitals are oriented at 90 degrees to one another. But when carbon is in a molecule, we hybridize the valence orbitals. So we are mixing orbitals on the same atom. And the idea that carbon has three electron regions and therefore three orbitals are hybridized so that they are oriented at 120 degrees fits with the geometry of the molecule. Here's another way to describe what happens to electrons in bonds. This is called molecular orbital theory. Instead of mixing orbitals on the same atom, orbitals are mixed on different atoms. So for example, in the carbonyl molecule, when we mix the carbon atom molecules and the oxygen atom molecules, this is the diagram that results. You're going to need to wait a little further into the lecture to understand this diagram. In building Lewis structures, resonance was presented as a way to describe delocalized bonding. MO theory is another way to describe delocalized bonding, and it's very mathematically based. The idea is, if the hydrogen atom can have orbitals, why can't the hydrogen molecule have orbitals? We're going to be building orbitals from molecules. So in MO theory, the orbitals of a molecule result from addition and subtraction of the valence atomic orbitals. Now since electrons travel in waves, according to de Broglie, the addition or subtraction of atomic orbitals can be either constructive or destructive. So if two waves are precisely in phase with one another, the peaks align and the valleys align, you get amplification of the waves. This would be constructive addition. But let's say the two waves are 180 degrees out of phase. The peak of one aligns with the valley of another. Well, then you get a line. That would be destructive interference. For MO theory, there's some abbreviations on the slides. Red represents the wave function when the algebraic sign is positive. This would be a positive sign for the region the electron occupies. Blue is going to represent when the wave function's algebraic sign is negative. And just like NC State and Duke are not typically friends, red and blue are going to cancel out. If you see a dot, that would be the atom's nucleus. AO is short for atomic orbital and MO is short for molecular orbital. First, we'll work on constructive interactions. You've already seen this. When two S orbitals meet and the wave function is in the same phase, we get what's called constructive interaction and a bonding molecular orbital. We call this a sigma bond. If p orbitals meet oriented in such a way that the two orbitals meeting are in the same phase, then once again we get constructive interaction, a bonding MO called a sigma bond. And if two p orbitals meet sideways such that the top region is in the same phase, and the bottom region is in the same phase, then we get a pi bond. We get constructive interaction with an electron probability region that can be above or below the nodal plane. Once again, this is a bonding molecular orbital.
The other type of molecular orbitals are called antibonding molecular orbitals. So these would be ones that have destructive interactions. So for example, if two s orbitals belonging to two different atoms met such that they were in opposite phases, you would get destructive interactions where the red and the blue overlapped. They would cancel each other out. The electron probability region that is produced from that would have two lobes. And the nuclei would be able to see one another. That's why it's called an antibonding MO. Two positive nuclei without electrons between them are going to repel. Now, since we change phase from red to blue, we have what's called a nodal plane, a region of no electron density. If p orbitals met, such that the two coming together were of 180 degrees difference in phase, once again, you would get cancellation in the middle. So although there's a tiny bit of shielding, the nuclei would still have a very good look at one another. This is another antibonding MO, and it has a nodal plane between the nuclei. So instead of being called sigma bonds, these are called sigma star bonds to indicate that they are at higher energy and antibonding MOs. That means they don't help with the bonding. In fact, they kind of inhibit bonding. If p orbitals were to meet sideways such that you had different phases both on the top and on the bottom, cancellation would occur. So we would once again have a vertical nodal plane. Since it is a pi interaction, there would also be a horizontal nodal plane. But because of this vertical nodal plane, this is an antibonding MO. The nuclei can once again get a really good look at each other, and they don't even have the help of the pi bond, which is a clasp to hold them together. The nodal plane goes all the way through. So this is higher energy, and we call this a pi star bond. So the difference between a sigma and a sigma star bond is the sigma bond has overlap in between. The sigma star is set up to have overlap in between, but instead has a nodal plane. The difference between a pi and a pi star bond is they are set up to have overlap above and below the plane, but there is a vertical node for the pi star bond which inhibits bonding. Please think about pushing the nuclei together in each of the pictures. For A, that would mean the black nuclei of the atoms Swish closer together. So you would be looking at the overlap here and here. Is that a pi star antibond? Try that for the rest of the combinations.